physical therapy student in his first year, and he's opening up all kinds of doors to the other students. Come on up, Jonathan. Um, in, in case any of you guys are in contact with nursing students, OT, PT students, and they wonder whether they can come to this luncheon or come on these trips or be part of CMBA, the answer is absolutely yes. We want them to do that. And so Jonathan's been a big part of that uh, for the PT students this year. Jonathan? Well, good afternoon. Um, good to be with you guys. I just want to uh, open up this little talk about the trip with uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 26. It says, For consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. And the base things of the world and the despised, God has chosen the things that are not, so that he may nullify the things that are, so that man may boast before God, so that no man may boast before God. But by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. So uh, I just wanted to sh open it up with that. And... Um, Kind of just tell you, I'm a first year uh, doctor physical therapy student, and um, just kind of thinking, you know, I don't have a whole lot to bring to this trip, and you know, I'm not many of the wise or the noble or the mighty, but um, on uh, the Tuesday night before the weekend that the trip occurred, um, I think Ross told me, yeah, there's going to be a trip this weekend. I was like, yes, I want to go on this thing. And then the only reason why I got to go is because I told him I could speak Spanish. And so right then and there, um, I was like, oh, man, i got to come through on my word. Like, what if I forget the words? And, you know, I don't know if this is going to work out. And so right as the trip's uh, getting going, uh, Whitney Rome, she says, are you excited? And I was like, well, I'm like 98% excited or 2% scared or like 98% excited and 2% scared. Or, well, however that goes. <laughs> the quote from Armageddon, right as they're getting, you know, strapped into the rocket ship to go up. But, um, so yeah, it, it, was, it was a really great time. It was really cool to see how um, the, the medical students, um, they, you know, they're not even doctors yet, and yet God is using them. Same way with the dental students. And um, that, I really got to see that kind of take place and from my end, it was really cool just to go and to kind of see those patients who are uh, on the benches waiting to uh, get seen and to go and just try to love on them and kind of make eye contact with them. That's one of the things that Scott told us about as the trip was starting that like, hey, like, you know, we, 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 want, to, we want to help them physically, right? But if we do 100 extractions but don't have love, it profits us nothing. And, you know, um, so that was kind of the idea there behind that. So it was really cool. I got to talk to, um, Scott already mentioned it, Christian and Lionel, um, the guys who were all into the drugs and everything. And um, just an amazing story of how God took them and totally transformed their lives. And, and then um, I just got to see that, that the, the change in them. Um, so that was really exciting. And um, so that's really all I wanted to say is that um, God can God can use you no matter what you have, and like He's gonna He's gonna take you know where you're weak, and He's gonna perfect His strength in that. Um, so um, that was really cool to get to see and, and pray with the patients uh, during the trip. So I really encourage you if you if you get the opportunity to really or either at the Del Rio. Or in, in the trip in April, we're going to go down to uh, do the wheelchair clinic. Um, it's, it's phenomenal to get to go and serve and then get to look at it more from just a physical perspective, but also to how can we pray for these patients while we're seeing them, or how can we share God's word with them. Um, so, anyways, thanks for hearing. Okay, next is Peyton. Peyton's DS2. Hey guys, um, this is my second trip, um, going on this trip to CMDA. The first one was last spring in April, it was about 100 degrees, um, the trip had no air conditioning, so this trip was a little bit more enjoyable um, in that respect. 
Um, uh, I was at the Rio Bravo church site, um, so we set up in the back room. You know, we've got a couple chairs going. Um, there's a lot of people. Um, it gets a little bit hectic at times, um, but it's pretty amazing the, the stuff that you get to do, especially the first or second year, um, stuff that you really don't get a chance to do otherwise. Um, and so for those of you who are looking to go on a trip, I mean, that's, that's one positive. I mean, it's definitely not the goal, but I mean, you really do get um, some experiences you don't get otherwise. Um, and I think the, the biggest thing I learned on this trip was just um, learning not to get so bogged down in focusing on um, what you're doing as far as the dental stuff. It's important to pay attention to what you're doing, um, but it's easy to lose sight of the mission of why you're really there, um, to love these people, um, share the gospel, um, and to really be able to reach out to them. Um, and so for me, I, you know, throughout the day, I constantly found myself um, just having to remind myself um, to be giving cheerfully, to make sure I had a smile on my face, to make sure... Um, you know, and it's hard because, you know, I speak pretty much zero English, uh, zero Spanish, I speak zero English. Um, so, you know, there's, there's definitely that limitation where um, you feel like you, you're not effective, there's not a lot you can do. Um, but really sometimes a, a simple smile, um, a touch on the shoulder, um, just having uh, gentle hands as you're working on really um, can go a long ways. Um, and another thing I realized on this trip was um, just appreciating um, the different parts of the body that we're all called to be in Christ. Um, you know, there are times where I wish I was able to speak more to patients or to really, um, you know, be able to pray, pray with them or lead them to Christ. Um, and I can't say that I had that opportunity on this trip. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like um, on this trip I was called to be, you know, the hands, um, the one doing some of the active work. Um, at the same time, you know, you see others who are out actually talking to them as they're going through triage or as they're waiting. Um, and so it's just neat to see the different aspects, um, how we all fit together, how uh, no one person has... Um, a more important job than the other, um, but we're all equally important and all necessary to make it all uh, come together. So that was really neat for me to see um, and to experience. Um, but I would just encourage any of you, if you haven't been or if you've been before and thinking about going, um, it's definitely a great thing. Um, it's nice that it's just a Friday, Saturday, so if you have stuff to do, you still have your Sunday to get stuff done. Um, they do take great care of you. Hotel accommodations are great. The food is great. I think some of the best meals I've ever had is these churches, these ladies, um, make some pretty awesome food. So. Um, that's always great. And it's always just a blessing to see the thankfulness of the people. Um, and really, I don't know that I've ever gone on a trip like this where, um, or I, I've, every time I've gone on a trip like this, I think I end up getting more out of it and being blessed by the people who um, you're serving, who end up serving you um, and are so thankful. Um, so that's just always really neat. But um, yeah, I would encourage you guys to try and go at some point. Um, it's a great experience and definitely uh, worth doing. So thanks. Okay, next is Ross, and uh, as he's coming, yeah, when I was talking to the pastor at the church, he told me that he estimated that probably 60 to 70 percent of the people in the Colonia in Rio Bravo are undocumented. So these are people that truly have no options medically and dental. Uh, they're, they're not going to go into town and, and even get any of the uh, government care that might be available, and uh, so these, these are people who truly have no options. And most of them are Spanish speaking. Russ? How do you have to write everything down as they or else I get tongue tied? I love every CMDA trip I attend and I enjoy them for several reasons. I love the fellowship during the, during the three hour car rides, whether it's playing 20 questions or exchanging life stories with classmates. I think there's something special. The Proverbs 27 reference to iron, iron, iron sharpening iron. I love the manual labor, whether it's packing or unpacking the trailer, setting up the clinics, or even the cleanup process and sweeping the floors afterwards. I love seeing God move through others, whether it's helping a wide-eyed pre-med student soak up the experience of a mission trip, or just seeing the gratefulness in the eyes of the patients we serve, the genuine hearts of everyone involved always gets me excited about the next trip. Over the years on these trips, I've seen some interesting pathology, but usually our days consist of prescribing antibiotics for chronic upper respiratory infections or counseling patients on the importance of a healthy diet and exercise. I remember Dr. Arkenhell telling me once that we will probably not see a large volume of large uh, complex medicine but he will also be the first one to tell you that's not the point the point is to 
to use medicine to be Christ's hands and feet, to meet people where they are, to heal when we can, and to share God's love regardless. For me personally, what he is reminding me during this trip and what he is reinforcing in all areas of my life is to trust him. You see, when I came on these trips during my preclinical years and as a third year, I was surrounded by the uncertainty of upcoming tests, boards to prepare for, and deadlines to meet. I had to trust him. I had no choice. I came anyway. He provided. And I've been blessed every time. I'm now a fourth year. And while I'm basically done with exams as a student, life won't get easier after graduation. There is so much uncertainty in my near future. How will I balance my faith in work? Where will I end up for residency? Who will be my friends? Who will be my support group? Short answer is I don't know. But I do know this. Proverbs 37, 23 through 25 says, The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young, and now, my, and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. Just as my heavenly daddy has always provided during these weekend trips, he has always provided in my life. To paraphrase Matthew 7, he may not always give me a fish when I ask for one, but he's never given me a snake. He has never let me down. He's a good dad. He's worth trusting. First year down student, and I apologize for not having a slide for Bethany, but uh, I didn't know until just a few minutes ago that we were going to be blessed with having her come. So. Neither did I. I don't really have a speech, guys. Um, so, I was trying to collect my thoughts. Um, so, I guess uh, what I would have to say is that all of us who are here were in professional school, well, or have already completed it, or somewhere along the line, um, or, or you know, joining in that venture. Um, but the reason that we go through these two or three or four years of grueling um, academia is so that we can have something to look forward to. We look forward to um, four years from now, or three years, or two years, um, being able to have something to offer the world. Um, you know, for us, maybe it's we're going to have a good career that can keep us able to support our families. Um, but the more important thing, and the thing that we're going to gain from this, is the ability to really change lives and really have an impact on people. Um, and the neat thing is that that does not have to wait until we've completed our four years. We don't have to wait until we're finished with school to be able to really have an impact on lives. And that's something that as you do these um, mission trips with CMBA, one of the things that you'll see is that you go into it kind of thinking, especially for me as a first year, I don't know anything. Um, I go in and I'm like, what can I offer? I don't, I maybe know how to do some root cleaning and scaling, and not even that really, just conceptually I get it, but um, <laughs> but <laughs> the more important thing um, is, that, is that we're cultivating compassion um, and just developing a love for people and the ability to meet people where they are, and you'll go in there and you'll see some pretty gnarly stuff, um, just as far as, as the teeth go, you can see some really bad oral hygiene, or for doctors who are or med students that are going, I'm sure it's a comparable situation, but um, the neat thing is just even though you can look at what's going on and, and have this reaction just like, oh, oh no, <laughs> you know, frazzled and, and stressed out, um, you have the ability to see people as human beings and to love them and treat them with compassion. Um, and so just for anyone who's doubtful about going on these trips because they don't know if they have anything to offer, um, just keep in mind that this is, this is a skill set we can develop now, just learning to love people. Um, and that's something that we'll carry with us into clinic and to a practice later. Those um, skill sets and knowledge will come with time um, as we complete our degrees here. Um, we'll learn how to do the more clinical aspects, but having a heart of compassion is something we can develop now. So um, anyone who's interested in going, I would definitely recommend it. And I think there were a couple people who went for the first time, um, and it went really well. It was really fun. This was my second time going, and just just the ability to just give back even with where we are. I enjoy it. So, um, yeah.
message last night saying, hey, uh, do you want to speak at the luncheon? I was like, uh, no. <laughs> so I get up this morning and I'm kind of panicking and things are running through my head. What am I going to say? I don't, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. And I thought, oh, surely it's a Thursday at the clinic in the morning and the afternoon. There's no way that I'm going to be able to make it. And I got done at like 11 o'clock. And then Yoli, our assistant, just was so sweet and helped me pick everything up. So I was like, okay, I guess you really want me to come and speak. Um, so I kind of feel like Moses when God asked him to go speak for the Israelites. So just um, my prayers that God will use this. Um, but I, I would just have to say, this is obviously my fourth year, so I'm really excited. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I had a, I had a really hard time getting into dental school. I applied three years before I got in. And I only got one interview and one acceptance letter, um, and it was to this school. And I believe that God wanted me here so I could be a part of this wonderful organization. And since year one, I was married, and I knew that I couldn't be involved in all these different extracurricular activities. So I really wanted to be a part of Team Day when I found out about it. And Scott, uh, thankfully, let me join the leadership team. And I just encourage any of you guys that are interested in leading and serving to, to be a part of it. Um, you get to be amongst other students that have the same passion and desire for the Lord and you're praying and you're ministering to the students of the campus and I think that's what it's all about because everybody's panicking here to get through a test or pass their boards or whatever it is and everybody needs prayer and love. Um, but these trips are really special to me and every trip that I've been on I've learned something different or seen something different. On this particular trip I was just so touched by the enthusiasm that the first and the second year dental students had to serve. And when I went on my first trip second year, you know, you kind of have that deer in the headlights look and you don't know what to do or, or how to serve, but they were all so encouraged to like get in there and put their hands on the patient or uh, walk someone back or get their medication or clean up the instruments. And there was no complaining, there was no grumbling. And so that really was, that was really, really uh, a blessing to me. Um, whereas. In my shoes, now I can treat and I can serve dentally. Um, I, I still think that the Lord values uh, whatever role you're serving in the mission trip to the utmost highest. <clears throat> and then there's one scripture I wanted to share with you about why I go on these trips. In Matthew 8, 16 and 17, it says, That evening they brought to him, who is Jesus, many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. And I'm kind of focusing on that, all who are sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. So um, for those of you who do have a personal relationship with Christ, what a wonderful blessing God gives us to imitate our Savior who came and, and bore our diseases and our sicknesses. And for those of you who don't, I just encourage you to just uh, pray about that. Pray, ask the Lord to... Um, to speak to you, and he will. I, I know he will. He's faithful to that. And if you have any questions at any time, you can always stop one of these guys that spoke, or myself, and ask us about our faith. I got a crazy story. Not as crazy as some people, but um, I, I'm thankful to the Lord for it. And um, I just, uh, I'm glad you guys come to these meetings, and I appreciate you listening to me, and I pray that you guys will have a great four years, and it'll go fast just like it's gone mine, and you guys can do it. Don't give up. He's with you. It's just a test. You know, you can, you can do it. So, thanks a lot. <clears throat> and last but not least is David Flanders, and he's a first year down. Hey, guys. Uh, one of my favorite things about going last when talking about these things is anything that you might have planned to say will probably have already been said. <laughs> so you kind of have to like think up something new on the spot. But I just view that as another opportunity to, tr to uh, trust in the Lord and uh, trust that it will give me something to say. Um, I'm a first-year dental student, uh, like my awesome sister that came up and was speaking earlier. Um, 
And I, I can say what everyone else has been saying and just that I really, really love these trips. Uh, I think they're such a great opportunity uh, to just get out, get away from school, get away from the books for a little while and just go out and serve. Um, this was actually my third trip with CMDA um, and it was just as good as the first two. And I think two, two things that uh, usually stop me from doing things like this, and I, I'm sure I'm not alone in this, is that first of all, like when it's the first trip, uh, I feel so many times it's something new and something kind of scary that you've never done before, and it's easy to make uh, easy to kind of make excuses for you know why why you shouldn't go on it or why you're busy or you have a test or something coming up. Um, but I just say it's one of those things where you just have to kind of do it, jump out there, put yourself out uh, uh, into something new, and uh, and you you really won't regret it. And the second thing is. Uh, that kind of goes along with the first is that I know that we're all we're all really busy. All have something else that we could be doing, um, but I think it's very important to make time for uh, for things like this, where you're going and you're you're serving others and really uh, trying to lend a helping hand. Uh, and that kind of goes back to one of the reasons that I uh, decided on dentistry and really healthcare uh, in general is because it's something. Um, that I feel will be a, would would be a great opportunity for me to serve others, for me to go out uh, and help people in ways that they may not always be able to uh, uh, to have that resource, to have dental care or medical care or anything like that. And so that was kind of one of my mentalities for even going into dentistry was, okay, I want to do this. I want to go, you know, to dental school, become a dentist, and serve others. You know. Whether it's just every day uh, in my office, or whether it's uh, on mission trips like these, uh, or even international mission trips as well, um, and so when I got to school, it was it was a temptation to just be like, oh, well, I'm really busy now. I'll once once I graduate, once I get out of dental school, then then I'll be able to go on mission trips. But it was something that I feel like the Lord just kind of spoke to me and was like, no, I mean, you you can still do something now. Um, and so that, that was one of the reasons that I've really tried to make an effort to go on these trips is because I feel like it's a great way to, even while I'm in the process of going through dental school, it's a great way um, uh, to just serve others and help. And it's, it's a great experience for you as well. I mean, uh, uh, like one of y'all was saying earlier, it's, I almost feel like I get more out of it than uh, the people who come there because it's just, it really, uh, it's so meaningful to me on many different levels, especially like as a DS1 where most of the time is spent, uh, you know, taking cl uh, in different classrooms and labs and taking tests and you're not really getting to do a whole lot of clinical um, clinical stuff. It's nice to get out and kind of get your hands on something uh, and uh, get that experience. Um, and just a scripture that I uh, thought of when I was sitting there uh, that I'd like to read y'all now is uh, Matthew 25, 34 through 40. And it says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in, naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them you did to me. And that just... That's the thing is going down to these uh, on these mission trips, you're going and serving people that may not have any other option to get the services that you're providing. You're providing to people that, you know, they may not have any hope of ever fixing that problem if it weren't for CMDA and other organizations going down um, and providing uh, these resources, resources and uh, health care and dental work uh, to them. Um, and so I'll just I'll just end with that saying that that's that's one of the reasons that I really think it's important to uh, to have CMD and to do these trips is to to serve the least of these uh, as we're commanded. So thank you so much for your time.
Thank you guys, that was, that was great. Our time is gone, but I wanted to say just at the end, Kelly, I think I'll just mention um, and show you guys uh, this and remind you that our El Salvador trip, our return trip to El Salvador is gonna be coming up June the 1st through the 9th. And it's going to be in partnership with a group called Global Health Outreach, which is part of CMBA's national office. And so cmba.org slash gho is the website. You go to their calendar, and then you look for the uh, El Salvador trip that's June the 1st through the 9th to Santa Ana. Now, some, some people have had a difficult time navigating and getting to that part on the website. So uh, if you have any questions or you have any problem finding it, just send me an email, and I'll send you the direct link to that site. But it's uh, $1,420 plus the cost of whatever the cost of your international airfare is going to be, which is what cost to get you from San Antonio to San Salvador. And that's going to be different for everybody. So uh, it's important that we get people signed up as soon as possible. They need to know there is a limit to the number that we can have on the team. So if you have any questions about that or you're interested in that El Salvador trip at all, please um, let me know and go on the website, check it out as soon as possible. Okay? God bless you guys. We'll see you next Thursday.